And when you can put a little humor in things, it really takes the emotional sting and the judgment out of it. And it gives you actually a more objective arena in which to say, hmm, what thought was I thinking that caused me to make that decision? Or what thought or what was I feeling that made me think that? Welcome to Sales Made Easy, a podcast for business and personal growth. Now, here's your host, Harry. We are in for a special treat today. I have an incredible guest. We're going to talk a little bit about mindset. We're going to talk a little bit about I am statements. And maybe we'll slide in a little sense of humor and how that helps us in business. So let's get on with our friend, Catherine Chadwick, who's joining the Sales Made Easy podcast. Catherine, what is the good word? Well, thank you, Mary. I'm really pleased to be here with you today. It's like, how fun is this? <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get into this conversation. But before we do, Catherine, can you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and how you serve people? Well, I really love what I do. I'm a mental fitness trainer. And I took on the term trainer because I do have a third degree black belt in karate. And I understand training and the importance of self-discipline, self-regulation, and self-development, right? And I don't think that self-development has to be a millstone. I have over 40 years of experience as a registered nurse. I've worked with people from all walks of life. And if your health is not good, your life experience isn't that great either. And I think it's really important for people to be able to realize and to be able to work with the, the mind-body connection, the mind-body-spirit connection, because the research shows that over 90% of health conditions and illnesses are lifestyle-induced. Mm. I'm a practitioner of applied positive psychology, and I'm the creator of the Sunshine Quotient which is a term that refers to lighting gradients in photography and radiology. And I've applied it to people because we are light beings and we're radiating light and information constantly. We receive that and learning to work with that energy that we're exchanging and utilizing. That's what I call learning the rules of the game. So I have a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, you are doing a lot. I love the energy conversation, the light, the you know, the fact that uh, the mind-body connection, I'm a huge believer in. So many people are struggling with health challenges. And, you know, and you're, uh, I'm not a doctor, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express once. And I used to have a lot of back issues 20-something years ago. And a friend of mine said, you, you're dealing with something else. And I said, no, this is a legit issue. I don't have something going on with my mind. This is not a made up thing. I was so adamant. And then I went on this journey of visiting all kinds of doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, surgeons, you name it. And I spent a year doing this. At the end of the year, the doctor I was working with, I told him, I said, you know, you're not going to believe this, but the pain in my back has now switched to the other side. And he went, oh, we're going to have to start all over again. And then I thought of my friend and I said, okay, I'm now ready for this conversation. Because <laughs> a year was enough to prove that he was wrong and I was right. And I read this great book, The Healing Back Pain, The Mind-Body Connection. I read maybe a couple of chapters, recognized it was about me. It was written for me. And my pain started to subside. and. That was maybe my daughter's 25. So that was when my wife was pregnant. No stress there. First child. So 25 years later, I'm still without back pain. Yeah. Well, how fabulous. <laughs> that, you know, it is very interesting. You know, by the time I was 23 years old, I was charge nurse of a small intensive care unit. And by the time I was 25, I'm in this hip to breast back brace. Mm -hmm. My lower lumbar back had crumbled. And I did have a marvelous repair at the Mayo Clinic. And my prescription was to wear this brace for a year and walk at least one mile a day for a year. And I'm back in Florida. I've lost everything. I hadn't been able to work for almost two years. Mm. 
and I'm sleeping on a friend's couch, but I have two bikinis. I have two back braces and I go to that beach every day. And the mantra is, this is not going to be my life. And I'm like, something is way off here because I could see where people coming into ICU had not been taking very good care of themselves for whatever reasons. But here I am in the same boat. I wasn't taking care of myself, working way too many hours. Uh, you can talk body mechanics all day long, but when the people are too heavy, when the equipment is too heavy, and I'm not the only one with this problem, something is way off. And I'm like, oh, this is no way to live. And I started listening to Wayne Dyer and I got told on cassette tapes. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm beginning to get it. And the, I, I call that really the beginning of my education and my real education. And I am a huge proponent of people understanding the basics of how we all operate, because I think that that's what I refer to as the rules of the game. Know what game you're in, and then you have a better idea of what rules to learn, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I think a lot of us, I mean, I didn't even know the game, right? So we have this amazing body that we get over things, cuts, heal, you know, it's just different things about us. And then we say, well, this pain is whatever. I, I can't heal myself. And, you know, I totally believe in this and what you said. And the Wayne Dyer connection is also something we have in common because, I mean, I'm a huge fan of what his work was and avid believer. And when I hear people talk about the pain that they're in, you know, I, 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 I don't really give advice on this because not everyone's ready for it. Right. So, oh, right. right. So sometimes I encourage people like this is an interesting podcast or this is an interesting video and off the, off that conversation. So it's not a direct affront to what they're experiencing sometimes. What's your thought on that? I, I agree with you on that because not everybody is ready and I have found, and you can use this too. I have found that introducing the concept of breath work is it's very simple. And, you know, when you take in a deep breath, you're engaging your vagus nerve and that's cranial nerve number 10. And it is connected to almost every organ in your body. And so it's a good thing to know about. And people are going, wow, really? Right. And so now they're a little bit interested. And when you take in that deep breath and engage the vagus nerve, it also invites the calming side of your nervous system to engage the parasympathetic nervous system. And, you know, you do several breaths of this. It lowers your blood pressure, lowers your heart rate. You can feel that you're calmer. It gives you an opportunity to pause and maybe respond instead of that quick reaction, right? And I think it makes a huge few difference. I actually encourage people to schedule themselves to do seven breaths at a time, like four or five times a day, just to start getting in tune and start developing a little bit of a mindfulness practice. It increases your self-awareness. It allows you to just pause, see what comes in, right? And when people understand that they can actually rely on their breath because they're now more connected with it and understand a little bit you know, why the operation of it is not to be taken for granted, you know, because we're breathing all the time and we don't breathe ourselves. We don't make our hearts beat on our own. So, okay, let's learn to work with these things. It's so fun. Oh my goodness. Just, you know, what you just said, I, I say a lot in the sell, sales process is that most people, they're jump on a selling side, they're quick to respond. And this is where I say, just breathe. When someone is telling you something, instead of feeling like, got to be ready, I've got to say something clever, I've, I've got to overcome whatever they're saying. They've got all these thoughts going in their mind, their shoulders start to come up. They start to feel the tension in their neck. I know because I used to feel these things. I still do occasionally. 
Then I remind myself, breathe, Harry. This is a good thing. And you just relax. The tension goes away. The shoulders drop. Now you can be a real listener. And that is super valuable in stressful situations, whether it be in sales or a client may not be real happy with something. So yeah, that stuff works. So when you're talking about this breath work, is there counting going on? Are you talking about like box breathing or what is it that you're referring to? Well, because I work with the sunshine quotient, right? And I teach people about that age old concept of visualizing breathing in the sunlight and, you know, imagining that you can feel the warmth of it on your skin. The light is coming into you. You're actually starting to glow from the inside out because it's filling every little crease and crevice of you. Your heart's actually getting bigger, right? You you've actually are feeling more generous. And I don't, I don't advise a, a specific count. If people like to do a count, count away, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if you breathe in through the nose deeply enough where you're actually engaging that vagus nerve and, you know, hold it a little bit in through the nose, hold it a little bit and out through the mouth as if you're gently blowing out a candle flame and that slows the exhalation down. And if people like to count, you know, I, people have different preferences, mm. right? And it's what they're used to. And I think, I think different, different styles of breath work can be incorporated. You know, it's, it's like a collaboration, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, my way or the highway. Right. right? And so I, you know, and what I, I loved what you said about, you know, listening, because when we're not listening and formulating you know, what the next thing is that we think that we're going to say, we've likely missed the whole point because we haven't listened to what the other person said, or we haven't listened to what we have said to ourselves. Explain that to me. Well, what's fascinating is, you know, we have really no control over what thoughts come into our mind, but we do have a choice as to which ones we choose to entertain, right? right. Yep. And so that's why I, I talk to people about, you know, each of us is really our own showrunner and the choice, the choices that we make is what I refer to as your ultimate mind diet. If you Google mind diet, you get a lot of nutritional information and that's all well and good, but it's really our thoughts and our emotions that, you know, determine what our actions are. And it's the thoughts that are running the show. And when you also realize that the research shows that the average lifespan of an emotion is 90 seconds or less, right? Okay. And if we keep perpetuating, you know, what it is, yeah. that, and the research also shows that we think between 18,000 and 70,000 thoughts in one day, and about 90% of those are the same as the day before, and the day before, and the day before. So. Many people are dragging the yesterdays along with them constantly, right? And when we're doing that, we're really missing the present moment. That's where the power is, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. What you just said. So if someone is, you know, you make me so angry or you hurt me and, you know, they go on with this and it's like, you know, weeks, months go by and where someone is, you know, Whatever the challenge has been, I'm not saying I don't have empathy for the person, but ultimately one needs to kind of look and say, what can I do about this instead of just living in the anguish, right? So, so with these thoughts, I mean, so you, you said listening to ourselves. Oh, so I, yeah, talk to me. So if you can develop a relationship with what I refer to as a curious observer. In some arenas, it's referred to as a witness, right? It's an outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. I like to be curious about it because that has a little bit of mischief to it. Mm -hmm. And when you can put a little humor in things, it really takes the emotional sting and the judgment out of it. And it gives you actually a more objective arena in which to say, hmm. What thought was I thinking that caused me to make that decision? Or what thought, or what was I feeling that made me think that? 
and you just get information and then you can use it to move on instead of, you know, that repetitive, you know, oh my gosh, how did I get here? What am I going to do about this? And, uh, you know, it's just like you could spend a lot of time doing that and you don't have to. Oh my goodness. This is just so good. I was time of the year. I was doing a lot of reflecting last week of the month, last week of 2023. And certain things I was doing, I was like, this is not bringing me any joy. This is like drudgeries, some of the <laughs> stuff, right? Hey. So when someone's going through that, what might be a good thing to do in your wonderful mind? What are your thoughts? I love pattern interrupts. And, you know, a very easy one is the breath work. Another easy one is changing your physicality. You know, get up. Take a little walk. Look at things. Actually, and actually, what works also in regards to perspectives, if you actually get up, go to the other side of the table, sit at another chair at the table, you know, you're changing your physicality, and it's just like, oh, so and active actively think what you know what can I think that's a little bit different? What's what's another way to look at this? And I think that it's important because we get stuck in our old perspective sometimes and it, it becomes tunnel vision and, you, you know, we're missing. The, and the thing that contributes to that too is the RAS, the reticular activating system, was, which is actually a part of your brainstem. And I think a, a really simplified explanation of this is I think of it as a synthesizer because okay. what you're thinking is running through the RAS and that's helping you to focus on what it is you're thinking about. And because that's what you're thinking about, that's what's likely what you're going to find. And think of a scavenger hunt, right? You've got this okay. lit. Oh my gosh, I've got to get the I've got to get the red balloon now. And so you're on the lookout for that red balloon and you're not even seeing that beautiful yellow, bright yellow Ferrari that's parked on the corner, right? <laughs> because so focused on that. And because that's what you're looking for that's what you're looking to find that's the information that comes back in and that's that's part of what contributes to that loop you know the repetitive thinking and so changing your perspective changing your physicality i believe is really helpful wow i didn't realize that the simple act of i know when writing for instance taking my laptop and going to a different part of the house or going on a patio is a whole lot better for me than sitting behind the desk for whatever reason. It's interesting. Yeah. So there's probably some science behind that. Sounds like. And what that is, you know, it's all, it's fascinating because, you know, we're vibration, we're, mm -hmm. we're all energy beings, we're electromagnetic, right? And what's wonderful about changing your physicality is you're also, you know, changing your vibration. So the vibration word, glad you brought it up. I've struggled with that. And I said, this is a little mystical for me because I've, I've never been around it, really, the vibration until the last couple of years. Uh -huh. And what I like, though, is like I've always been around energy. I've always said that person is just spewing negative energy or they're I love being around that person because there's so much positive energy, right. right? So the energy is this vibration that we're speaking about, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. When, Can you go a little bit more on what your thoughts are on that? Because I think there are probably people like me that just don't connect with their word vibration, but they definitely connect with the energy because we all emulate or whatever the word is. We're, always put, we're all putting out some kind of energy. People will say that person is giving me a bad vibe. Right. It's without even thinking of that vibration is the rest of the word. And that just dawned on me as well. So talk to me. Well, it's fun. You know, the, there are many illustrations, but energy can be actually measured. And there's this fabulous graphic that I like to use from the Omega Institute and in regards to the emotional energetic scale. And you can see, even though you might be really angry and that feels intense for you, the, the value 
of that vibration is very low. The bad vibe, right? Mm -hmm. And that gets to be contagious. And it also gets to be repetitive. And so if you can have a visual and say, okay, what's the next best thought that I can think? to take me a little bit further up the scale. It's, it's like going up the steps, right? One step at a time, one step at a time. Oh, and the other thing that's good to know is that hope is the only positive emotion that requires a negative emotion as a catalyst. And hope mm -hmm. is a beautiful bridge. You don't want to live on the bridge, but you can use it, right? And understand the, yeah, guys, I hope tomorrow's better, right? Right, right. And, so, and you don't want to live in the land of hope because it is a bridge mm -hmm. and can help to take you up the scale. And what's beautiful is, you know, gratitude and love are very high vibrations and they, they run pretty much on the same plane. Mm -hmm. And so a gratitude practice, it, right. it is actually effective in helping to raise your vibration. And actually, the other thing that's fabulous to know about is the heart-brain coherence, because the heart actually sends more information to the brain than the brain does to the heart. And that, yeah, the, the Heart Math Institute is a, does a, a lot of wonderful research. Yeah, this is, this is a great conversation. And I want to talk a little bit change gears slightly but this is all tied in is to the value of the i am statements so this i when i started listening to wayne dyer i mean i heard of i am statements i said i am statements without realizing what i was doing yeah and the same is true with breathing there's a lot of things that some of us might just do because we've seen others do it or whatever we heard about it or we stumbled across it, but the, can we talk a little bit about the value of the I am statements and why they're so powerful? Well, because the power is in the present moment. And if I say to you, you know, I'm going to try to lose five pounds over the next month. Well, trying isn't doing, right? right. Yeah. You have to have the action and the power is in the present moment. And that's where the action is in the present moment. You can think about losing five pounds, but unless you're actually taking steps to lose those five pounds, it, it you know, that just pushes it off. It's like, oh, well, maybe someday I'll, I'll lose those five pounds. I am taking steps to lose five pounds this month. And you can just feel the, the you know, the strength of that statement versus well, I'm going to try to lose five pounds. Mm. Okay. All right. So this, my head is spinning here. So I'm going to tie this into, that's exactly what I've been trying to do is lose five pounds. Um, I'm stuck on a weight. Now I've lost weight and then I stay at the same weight for a few months. And then mm -hmm. something happens and I lose the weight again. There's like five pound stretches and it's happened over the course of a few years, but I have this target weight. It does not flow like over the course of a year. It hasn't been like that. It's get down, stay for a long time. And then something happens and I have not been able to pick up what it is that happens where I actually can lose the weight. I mean, I, I, I'm doing intermittent fasting now. And mm -hmm. I, I said, my goal is I want to get down to this particular number. Mm -hmm. I can't get past the five, five pounds is going to get me to another number, which I want to get to another number after that five pounds. And I say, that's it. I want to get to that number. Am I doing this wrong? Well, you know, it's not wrong. Right. If you can realize, you know, it's good to have a target and then reverse engineer it and as to, you know, all right, what steps do I take to actually lose the five pounds? Because it's great to want to lose the five pounds. You know, I, I want to make another $10,000 next week, right? Unless I take the action to do it and have, you know, and know the steps that are required of me to, to accomplish that 
it doesn't just fall out of the sky, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> and so what's also interesting is, and talk about losing weight, it's important to understand the nutritional values of things because, you know, food is energy as well. Mm. And our body utilizes different types of nutrition differently. And mm. continuing to eat high on the carbohydrate scale actually invites people to eat more. Yeah. And, and so understanding that uh, maybe a little bit higher protein, right? A few less carbs. Uh, and, so, you know, but it's fascinating too, is that the same diet doesn't work for everybody. Right. It's not, it's not an across the board, yeah. okay, you have to eat high protein, don't eat any carbs. Well, okay, that may, that may work for some people. It works great for me, but it might not necessarily be the one that's ideal for you. Right. right. Yeah. And, and so, but actually taking the actions to explore and find the information that will, you know, help fuel you is an important step to take. And also understanding that the I am, I am taking steps to lose these five pounds by, by June or whenever. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and having a target date is important as well because it helps you reverse engineer what it is you're actually going to do about it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I just, as you're speaking, I'm thinking about, yeah, this is pretty silly that I just raised this question because really what happens is that I stop doing some of the things that I need to be doing to lose that weight. Perfect. Right. And so I'll pick it up again. And what I do, is that's when the weight yeah, so it's interesting, right? It's just like, well, what are the steps I'm taking? Duh. <laughs> it's uh, pretty pretty brilliant there, Catherine. Well, Why it, do I miss that? Well, but you know, it's so easy to get sidetracked, right? And because we get, you know, focused on something else and then, you know, we run on habit. Right. And so it's the reprogramming and creating the new neural pathways that really are helpful for us. Uh, think about if you go to the grocery store the same way, the same route for 10 years, think of what you're missing. Right. By going another way. Right. Yep. And it, it might, it might be the most expedient, you know, way to get there, but is it really the most interesting? Do you learn anything new by doing it or is it just by, you know, kind of by rote? Uh, and um, so I think that that makes a difference. I, I'm really, I did, I've developed a, uh, you know, I have this kids program for the sunshine quotient and teaching kids to learn to think with intention and the I am states, right? Love it. Yep. And you know, I, you know, today I am curious or today I am bold. Today I am silly. Today I'm fun. Today, oh, you know, whatever that is, but choose some words each day and, you know, and there's plenty you know, particularly for a four or five-year-old. And today I am high. Today I am, you know, whatever the word may be. And it also helps them to expand their vocabulary and their mm. imagination because nothing happens without the imagination. So I put together, going back to my ultimate mind diet, I put together a daily planner and journal for older kids and adults. And it's, it's the same concept is, you know, choose words each day for your I am statement. Today I am folk. Today I am curious. Today I am kind or, you know, whatever. And also to write down your priorities and what, what, what is on my calendar and is it actually supporting what it is that I want to accomplish? And so I've included a point system on this and think about you we each have 50 points every day we have to spend them they're energy points we have to spend them we are spending them one way or another and thinking about the value of how and what you're spending these points on and there's no credit card you know once you're out of points you're done and are you giving points away are you, or are you utilizing them? I mean, it's good to be giving. If you're a people pleaser, you may have, you may have given away all your points by noon. It's, you know, it's not serving 
your purpose, because I believe that we have a purpose to be here. Mm. And if we're, yeah. not, if we're not whole, if we're not full of energy to be able to share and mm. having a high vibration to be able to, you know, be contagious, right? It's hard to be, it's hard to influence anyone or any situation if you're that cranky guy over in the corner. Right. Right. And so there's so many things to think about. And also at the end of the day, evaluate the day. And what would you have done differently? Because you, you really want to rewrite that program or each our own showrunner. Okay. So, all right. What can I learn today? to help reprogram myself to is to add to the day tomorrow. Mm. Right. Because there's no point in getting up and go, oh man, you know, I can't believe I did that yesterday. And then you start to I this I the same <laughs> I the on the same, you know, nasty route. And right. it doesn't serve you, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying be a Pollyanna. I'm saying, you know, be realistic. But also be able to laugh at yourself too. Have a little humor because we all do silly things. And it's just like, oh man, I can't believe I said that. Or I can't believe I did that. I guess I don't really want to do that again. You know, and it's a great way to learn without beating yourself up. Because when you, when you allow yourself to be continually, continually in those lower vibrations, you're not going to make any progress. You don't get what you want when you're living down there. No, so true. I just love what you said here about the sense of humor. You know, it's like, this is a gift from God is what I believe is our sense of humor. I mean, it's part of who we are. It's part of what we do. I can't even imagine what, I mean, back, I don't know, when you look at the photographs of people that lived in the early 1900s, it's like stern looking. It's like, well, we're not supposed to smile. Whoever came up with that, right? But the, the reality is, is that we all like a good laugh. We all like to smile. We feel good. There's things that are happening. Hormones are being released when we're smiling. The oxytocin and dopamine that's going on in our brains. All of this is good. And when people get into the business mind, it's like, no, no, we can't have fun because this is serious. Business is always serious. And what's your thought on that? Is that, does business always need to be serious to you, Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> In a word, yeah. no. Yeah. I, I recall being chastised mm. is working in an ICU. Yeah. A couple of the other nurses were saying, you know, there's nothing funny about any of this that's going on. And I, you know, because I would talk with people and have a sense of humor with them and mm -hmm. find, you know, find the lightness. Yeah. Right. And. And my response was, you know, nobody wants to be treated like they're dead until they right. are. Yeah. And when I think when we remove the humor, it, it's not a benefit to anybody. Not every, not every situation is humorous. Right. However, there is humor to be found in the irony of life. And life is pretty ironic. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Oh my goodness. But even in death without getting morbid here, you know, I can think of experiences of my father passing and his sense of humor at up to the very end. It's just remarkable. Is that this is the way you want to go out, in my opinion. You don't want to go out as miserable. And he, he set the example for me. I'm sure I'm not sure he knew that, but he definitely set the example. For me and my children, when I reached that point, it's like, I want to go out like that. I want to go out with a sense of humor and still enjoying up until the last minutes here. Yeah, it's great. I agree, with, I agree with you. My mom had Alzheimer's hmm. and I had gone up to visit her for a long weekend and I had been there for a couple of days already. And we're sitting in her den and she's in her recliner. She loved to watch the golf and... She started playing golf later in life and oh she was pretty good. Yeah. And, and so she loved watching the golf tournaments and I'm sitting on this little love seat next to the recliner and, and I've been there a couple of days and she all of a sudden looks at me and she said, oh, are you? 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor woman, you know, thinks there's some stranger in her home. And I said, I'm your daughter, Catherine. And she said, you are not. Yeah. Said, well, you know, when I was a kid, everybody used to call me Cassandra. I said, does that ring a bell for you? And she goes, you are not. And I'm like, I said, well, you know, we have a real opportunity here. We can play a game and I can be anybody you want me to be. And she's looking around like she's really thinking. And she says, well, anybody but you. Well, I just burst out laughing. I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, you cannot make this stuff up. This is hysterical. And then they started laughing. It was good for the next two days. Every time we to each other, we would start laughing, you know. Oh, my goodness. And, and, she, and she'd laugh and she'd say, oh, you're Catherine. I said, Such a sweet story. I know, right? Yeah. And, you know, it was just like, it could have gone either way. And, well, yeah. And, I mean, I'm sorry, you got. Well, no, I, I was just. I was grateful for my response. Yeah. And right. brilliant. Right. And in the moment, right, where you're giving this some thought, I can be whoever you want me to be. I mean, who, how do you come up with that one? I know. It's a really a good one. The, <laughs> the other, the side that you were talking about, trying new things, expanding yourself, just reading this book called Limitless by Jim Quick. Oh yeah, I have Are that. Familiar? Okay. What, what was it? Was how does this all tie in with what your mom suffered through with Alzheimer's? Do, were you any thoughts on that as far as trying new things to the brain? Well, it's fascinating because, and I, I saw, I see it happen with a lot of people. It's it's almost as if people get to a point and they kind of give up, and it's the same habit over and over and over and over and over, and there's no stimulation. More. or creating new neural pathways and then of course as, as we do age you know things don't work quite as well and and so then there's kind of a um, almost like hopelessness mm. that comes and then of course there's no determination to do anything new and when when that sets in and then people are less physically active and there aren't those pattern interrupts and there's, there aren't new interests and there aren't new things to do. And I think it, it kind of has a snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things he spoke about in his book is just try doing different things, doing the same thing different. Yes. Right. Like you mentioned earlier about taking a different route to the grocery store. Right. So it's not automatic. It's like when we're driving somewhere and we get out of the car, it's like, I can't remember a thing as to how I got here because I was in such autopilot. And you know that when you're going somewhere different on the same road and maybe the road has a right turn, you always take you take the right turn and you know you should have continued going straight. And like my wife will say, why did you turn here? It's like, that was just a habit, right? Wasn't even thinking. Right. So taking different routes gets the brain thinking a little bit differently. Jim Quick talks about brushing your teeth with the opposite hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, just weird things that will help stimulate growth of brain cells. Mm -hmm. Cold, alternating cold with heat on your showers, right? Dropping the temperature big time for, <laughs> I don't know what the scientific term is there, but it will shock your body. Intermittent fasting. There's all kinds of different things that can help grow the brain cells. And of course, learning yes. new things. and trying new things, having a growth mindset, all of that's good. So well, any thoughts on that? Well, I'm, I'm back in school. I'm currently enrolled in a master's to PhD program in integrative medicine with Quantum mm -hmm. University based out of Hawaii. And yeah, it, it's so fun and it really supports everything that I'm doing. And so I'm, I'm eating it right up. <laughs> good for you. So uh, let's keep it sharp. So Catherine, You've got this game. What, what's it called again? And where can people find it? Oh, it's launching in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, it's called My Ultimate Mind Diet, Daily Planner and Journal. And this will okay. interface with Google and Outlook calendars. So you don't have to have two calendars going. Be like an extension for these, I think, is how I understand how it will work. 
Okay. Uh, and so this is, wait a minute. So it's not a game. I apologize. It's a planner. It can sync with maybe Chrome or something, maybe. So then I can pop up or maybe on my Google calendar, I can see this along with my day's activities. I can say word for the day is, or I am happy or I am uh, silly or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. Isn't that so fun? Yes. I like this planner. It brings life to the other, <laughs> the unimportant, what is it? The boring planner. All right. So where are we going to be able to find this before I, I'll stop interrupting you? Oh, um, the easiest place to find all of this is on my website, and that is theartofselfcraftsmanship.org. Okay. And that includes the Sunshine Potion. It includes the kids, you know, calendar. It, it will include this daily planner. Uh, I have some free resources there, uh, Universal Energy and uh, Universal Laws and Energy Principles Introductory Workbook, you know, just just little things to get people started in thinking a little bit differently sometimes. Change their vibration, maybe. That's right. <laughs> their vibration is high energy and fun, Catherine. It has been a Thank blast you. to have you here this morning and look forward to speaking with you again down the road. You have an outstanding day. Well, thank you so much, because I think that we both have um, a high vibration going and we both appreciate senses of humor. And I think that that's really important and it's fun to be around. So let's do this again. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing more of you. You're, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Sales Made Easy. If you found value in our conversations, please subscribe and leave a review. We'll be back soon with more insights and inspiration. Until then, keep serving and providing value to others. Good things will happen.